Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a fuel filter change on a 2012 JH Series 2 Holden Cruise turbo diesel. Um, you can see I've got the car up on ramps so I can get underneath it. It doesn't really need to be all that high off the ground and you're really only going to get your arm underneath the car. So yeah, it's in park and the handbrake's on so we should be right to work on the car. Um, I'll just show you what you're going to need in terms of tools. Um, you're going to need a 36 mil uh, socket uh, for the fuel filter housing. Obviously going to need a new fuel filter. Uh, this one's a Westfill. Um, in the packet that it comes in, you'll find a new seal for the fuel filter housing. The only other thing you're going to need a pair of gloves, nitrile gloves, just so you don't get diesel all over your hands. Um, I've also got a bit of cardboard underneath the car, so if I spill any diesel it's just going to go on the cardboard and not on the uh, garage floor and an oil sump, uh, oil pan. Okay, so under the driver's side of the car you'll see the fuel filter housing right there. Uh, so it's towards the back of the car, uh, just in front of the fuel tank. So, as I said, that takes a 36mm socket, so we'll loosen that off. Um, it's full of fuel at the moment, so there's going to be a fair bit of fuel come out of that uh, when uh, we uh, take that housing cover off. So that's why you need the um, sump uh, pan for that to fall into. Um, the car needs to be off, so the car's off, there's no fuel pressure uh, in the fuel system. Um, if your car is on, there's going to be fuel pressure, quite a lot of fuel pressure. So make sure your car is switched off before you do this. Um, so switched off, um, no pressure, but a lot of fuel is going to come out of there. So I'll just loosen that off um, and back in a sec. Okay, so I'm just going to unscrew that now. See fuel starting to leak out of that. That's hopefully hand tight there now, which it is. So we'll just back that right off. And there'll be fuel pissing out everywhere in a sec. There it goes. So yeah, so that's why you need your oil pan underneath there and a bit of cardboard. So yeah, so that's the fuel filter clipped into the housing. Um, up here, you need to pull that seal out because we need to replace that. Let's try and get a hold of that. We need a pair of pliers maybe. Get onto that. Yeah, oh. Yeah, I'll grab a pair of pliers and just pinch that and grab that. No, no, here we go. Right, so that's out of there. Okay, so um, we need to uh, pull the old filter out of the housing, uh, pop a new seal in there, tighten it all up, and um, we'll go on to uh, repressurizing the fuel system. Okay, so this is the old filter here. Um, I can't remember what the recommended service intervals for these are, but I change mine every 12 months when I do a major service on the car. Um, I think it might be every two years that they recommend to change these, but they cost, you know, uh, you know, 25 to 40 bucks depending on where you get them from. So they're not a high cost item. So that's the old one out. I'll just chuck that in this bucket over here. Get that out of the way. And the new one just pops on there. And that's ready to go back in the car. Okay. Right, we're ready to reinstall the seal uh, on the fuel filter housing. Now uh, you'll notice that it's beveled. So you can just see there's a bit of a split there. So that's the thicker end there. Turn it over, that's the thin side. Um, the thick side goes up into this housing up here, so that'll get held in place. 
can see that like so and then we can put the fuel filter housing back in that'll spin all the way on and just finish that off with the socket and we're done down here be back in a sec Okay, so the fuel filter housing is done up tight. Um, now we need to repressurize the fuel system because we've um, taken the bowl out that holds the fuel filter. Um, that was full of fuel. Um, there was no air in the system. And um, yeah, so we need to get air out that we've introduced into the system by removing and changing the fuel filter. So what you do is you want to turn the car to the on position. You don't want to start it at this stage. We're going to do this about six or seven times until we get all the oil, uh, all the air out of the fuel system. So when I turn the car on, the fuel pump's going to turn on and you'll be able to hear air gurgling through the fuel lines. So we'll turn it on, wait till the fuel uh, pump stops, then we'll turn it off. Then we'll turn it on and um, do the same thing again, not starting it. We'll do that about six or seven times until um, we've got all the air out of the fuel system and then we can start the car again. So I don't know whether you'll be able to hear it, but you might be able to hear some air gurgling when I turn the car on. Let's turn that off again. Right, here we go. So I turn it off. Back on, you can hear the fuel pump whirring in the back of the car. I just heard a whole pile of air there. So you turn it right off and then back on again. I don't know whether you heard that, but that's a lot of air. Still a lot of air there. You can hear a lot of air, air gurgling in the engine bay now, so we're getting close. I've heard no air gurgling that time. Go right off again, and now we'll start the car, and we're golden. So you just want to climb underneath the car and just make sure that there's no fuel uh, leaking out of fuel filter housing. Um, if you've got no leaks, all good to go, and you're done.